Columbo was a lot of fun because Falk is such a gentleman and had so much control. A gentleman with control is a blessing who is director sympathetic. And since Peter wanted to get everything as right it, as it could possibly be, why we just took forever. And I kept, I kept looking over my shoulder. There was no one there. He had control of that show. I heard later that there had been arguments about the budget and the expenditures and so on. And Peter had been an accountant as a young guy or something. So he and his lawyer and or he and his accountant and his lawyer or something did some arithmetic and decided that he could do anything he wanted to and they were still going to make mountains of money and not to believe all the horror stories that he was hearing from the bosses. So resultantly, he wasn't cantankerous or dictatorial or anything. He just wanted it right. Let's, let's try it. Let's try one. Peter, you got it, you know. And he was just a very good guy to work with. I started to say work for, and I guess that's the truth, because he had the clout and the power. But I, I brought in some, some good stuff for him and for the show. And I, I said to him once when we were talking performance, and it wasn't me really directing him. It was me appreciating Columbo as a character. I said to him, you know, Columbo's a great character because he wants everybody to be innocent. He doesn't want the guy to be guilty. Listen, I believe everything you say, but there's just one thing that bothers me. I didn't re read that as malicious. I read that as hopeful. And I told Peter that, and he kind of got a kick out of these. He said, no, I never thought of that before. Now, others may read it differently, but it's the half full cup reading, you know, half full cup reading. And uh, I enjoyed that a lot. And then Marty Landau played twins on an episode, which was a lot of fun to do, because I had worked at Disney enough, so I knew the execution of twins, and I knew how to, knew how to do that and make it you know, believable for the time. It's a little cornball now, but then it was good. Marty did a wonderful job of playing two distinct characters. One was carefree and joie de vivre and all of that, and the other was kind of serious and earnest. And as soon as Marty walked on, what with attitude and wardrobe and everything, hair, you knew which twin you were looking at. He did a, a masterful job. It was a lot of fun working with him because he had the light touch, very proficient, trained, chopsy guy. He had the chops to do all of that stuff. And it was just a lot of fun. And he appreciated Peter. He appreciated Peter's eccentricity and the honesty and integrity within that weird little guy he was doing, you know. It was, a, it was a terrific experience. Jack Cassidy was on one of them that I directed, and he played the villain. And he and Peter, I guess, did a show every season because they were so good opposite one another. Jack had the silver hair and the goatee and the rich voice and everything, and Peter had the raincoat and the colloquiality. And you put those two elements together, and it's just great, oil and water. Somebody's going to win, guess who, you know. But uh, that was a lot of fun to do. So Marty as twins was one villain, and Jack Cassidy with his chromium goatee was the other villain, and it was just a lot of fun to do. I said to Kibbe, Ro Roland Kibbe, I guess was his name, very mm -hmm. savvy producer, writer, guy with a mile of experience, and you know, alluding to Peter and the power and everything, not rancorously, I said, hey, this is a really good show. I'd like to direct one sometime, meaning I'd like to come in and really do everything. And he, Kibbe, said, yeah, I've got a lot of writers not writing them, too, you know. <laughs> Funny, good guy. Good experience, good experience. Did Protected you, um, by Peter's power. Protected by Peter's power. 